Today we have Stuart Jeffries Oching. He is a PR practitioner and a fashion designer. Let's dive in to know more. My name is Grenis Nyangweso. So Stuart, yes. tell us more about your PR practice. Uh, so my PR practice came as a, as a result of my performance, especially in uh, my good performance in the languages back in high school. Yeah, in high school I was quite good in languages. That is English and Kiswahili. But I was even good at chemistry. I actually wanted to be a pharmacist. Yeah, so I applied for pharmacy as the top choice in, in, in all of the four choices that I had. Yeah, but come the results, I didn't perform well in the sciences. I had an A in chemistry, but for biology, I didn't perform quite well in physics. I had Bs. So I resorted for a second option, which was media and uh, public relations in general. Yeah, so I applied and I got invited to Mo University to study communication and public relations. Okay. Yeah, Bachelor of Science. Okay, and at what point did you know that you wanted to be a fashion designer? Uh, being a fashion designer, in terms of now being a professional mainstream fashion designer, I made that decision in 2016 when there was the advert for Blaze BYOB TV show, the first season. Yeah, that's when I decided now I wanted to, to do fashion design as a, as a career and I applied but uh, at that point I, it, I didn't make it. I made it into film which is also another interest which I had. So I pursued film for a few years until, until uh, this year when I got now a scholarship by KCB to Jajiri to study fashion design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is when I became fully no, fashion design. I made up my mind and uh, I registered my brand in fashion. Why did you go for PR first instead of fashion design in your choices of courses? Uh, you know, in, uh, in a household such as ours and uh, in most households in Kenya, fashion design is not taken as a career. Yeah, most people take it as a hobby and especially there are very few fashion designers in Kenya. We have tailors mostly and dressmakers. So when you say you want to be a fashion designer, most people take it in the sense that you want to be a tailor. Yeah, and uh, most people take tailoring or craft craftsmen in the fashion industry as uh, the last resort for people who have either not gone to school or people who fail their exams. Uh, those are the kind of people who become tailors. So if you tell anybody that you want to be a fashion designer, they immediately dismiss it. Because no parent uh, sacrifices in Kenya to, to take their kids to a good school uh, and support them. And then this person has passed their exams. So how can you explain to your parent that you want to go and study fashion design? It was actually out of the question. And even back when I was applying for campus, there were very few institutions, if, if at all there was any, that was offering fashion design as a course. Yeah. There are diploma programs for fashion design, etc. But not for job, for joint admissions board, there are, there are what, either none or very few. How do you balance PR and fashion design? Uh, PR and fashion design, you know, even before starting uh, fashion design as a career uh, or as a business, I was still doing fashion design though as a hobby. Yeah, uh, in 2014, I actually clinched Mr. Culture Mo University, uh, which was a, a title I carried for two years, for two, two and a half years. That was 2014, 2015, and 2016, uh, until around December. Yeah, is when I handed over the crown. Mm -hmm. So back then, I just used to do it as, 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 a, as a hobby, as something to just feel good, as something you do on your leisure time. Yeah, then slowly by slowly the interest started developing. I started working as a stylist uh, for music videos. People would invite me to dress them for photo shoots. People would invite me. People were going to weddings who needed suits, they needed designs. So I just started drawing up designs, working with different tailors to, to make the garments and, and sell to different people. 
Yeah, somebody will call me, I need a suit and a trench coat, and then I fix them with the right color, uh, with the right color combinations, the right fabric. I purchase the fabric, I get a good fundi, mm -hmm. and then they make the outfit. And in any occasion, do you combine both works, the PR and fashion design, or you just do them separately? I actually do both mm -hmm. as, as one. As one. Yeah, I, I do both as one because uh, in public relations practice, uh, in public relations practice, mm -hmm. uh, image consultancy is a major facet. Yeah, uh, um, uh, among the top things about uh, public relations, mm -hmm. we focus a lot on the image. Yeah, and when you're building the image or you're building the brand, you have to think about the style. Yeah, and when you think about style, you think about design. And when you think about design, you think about fashion design now. Fashion is a broad industry. Yes. So what key area do you venture in? I'm focused on design. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on design. And uh, in Kenya, if I put it in the right context in terms of the global industry, I'm a creative director. Yeah, but in Kenya, very few, being a creative director in itself is not a sufficient career in the current ecosystem. Yeah, so I'm a creative director and I'm also a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Creative director is somebody who, who, who tells a story and uh, somebody who expresses a feeling or, or, or a story through garment. Yeah? But a fashion designer is somebody who creates the illusion that tells the story. The creative director is the person who has the idea. They may not be necessarily good at deciding which color combination or which palette or which style or which stitching style is, is involved with the process, but they can tell you, I want maybe a 70s look and uh, maybe in a, in a mid-brown something that tells an African story. So, you know, for me, I'll think maybe I need to use some off-white, mid-brown, eh, and then now that when I get to that point, now I'm thinking as a designer. You see. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm both a creative director and a designer and apparently I'm also a craftsman because sometimes you have to make the garment so that your vision comes to life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can explain to a very good craftsman but if they don't see into your vision they cannot give you exactly what you want. So how often do you become the craftsman? Uh, I'm just done with, 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 with fashion school mm -hmm. as a craftsman. Yeah, I've just finished my grade 3 training where now I was working in a studio setting, uh, working with a real fundi who has the experience, trying to, to get to know now deeper. So as a craftsman, I'm just starting. Uh, though my interest as a craftsman is more into making bags than making garment. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, basing the fact that fashion is not an everyday activity for you, what else do you do to keep yourself busy? Uh, I have a company that is Alpha Lifestyle Media, so that is what I do on, on, on the full time. Uh, and actually the, the clothing line is part of the media, the media company. You see, uh, I can't say that I don't do fashion on the daily. I do fashion on the daily, only that my day is divided in such a way that I, I handle public relations. I have time for public relations. and if. You cannot find me during those hours as a public relations practitioner. There are ways in which you can reach me later. Or there are ways in which you can communicate if it is something urgent, and then I can either give somebody else the job, or we can find a way of scheduling it. And uh, I also have time during the day for, for fashion design. And what can you tell us about the skill sets needed for, to be a successful fashion designer? Uh, to be a successful fashion designer in the actual sense, mm -hmm. Uh, the skills that are needed, you need uh, dressmaking skills, mm -hmm. you need design skills, and that is, in terms of design, I'm speaking both uh, the, the idea and also putting it down into maybe a drawing, uh, and not even maybe, you have to learn how to put your idea into a drawing and uh, put your idea into maybe a graphic drawing in terms of a computer using different softwares. Uh, also, there is a colorist. There are people who are just good at coming up with good color combinations, unique color combinations for for a design or for a collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, we also have printers. We, we have people who now they they are they are specialized in different printing mechanisms, different printing uh, techniques, 
uh, like there's waxing, there's wax printing, there's tie and dye, there's screen printing. Yeah. So whatever you are creating, uh, you you will be obviously working with a very specific print design, embroidery design, embroidery printing, etc. 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 Mm. Yeah. And then uh, we also have knitting and cro crochet, uh, embroidery. You need to have skills or have somebody who has skills in embroidery. Uh, also, in terms of in the, in the as a fashion designer, you need to have a creative director, and uh, you also need to have a, a business director, somebody who who can be able to tell you the commercial value of your products, and uh, somebody who can be able to inform you of your relevant market, where you can sell well your niche. Somebody who can be able to, to, to help you to cut costs in terms of production, distribution. Mm -hmm. Somebody who understands distribution. Uh, somebody who understands marketing. Okay, speaking of skills, tell us about your outfit. I see it's a, it's a unique outfit. Thank so you. So, what kind of outfit is it? Uh, so, this outfit, mm -hmm. it's, it's based on the palette that I'm working with. I'm, I'm creating a collection mm -hmm. for an event that I have in December. That is Lake Victoria Fashion Week. So I'm working on green. I'm working on green tones. So right now I'm trying to work with with different types of shades of green, like teal, turquoise, dark green. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, this outfit is the first outfit that I actually came up with. Yeah. So this checked the fabrics. They are all imported. There is none that is made here locally. Yeah. Uh, this is crown. This fabric is called crown, and the lower one is woolen. Mm -hmm. Yes, woolen suiting material. Mm -hmm. uh, I drew the design, and uh, I sourced the fabric, and I stitched. I stitched it. So it's purely your work. Yeah, it's purely. I will say, apart from the fabric, the company that made the fabric and the thread, the rest is my work. Okay. Yeah. So what are the work ethics needed in this industry, the fashion design industry? Uh, in the fashion design industry, you, in terms of ethics. There are standard ethics, but again, they are personal. Yeah, they are personal values that you have to attach as a person, so that you give a unique value propo proposition to your clients. Yeah, and that includes uh, honesty first of all, honesty in terms of pricing. Yeah, you you should not be in a hurry to rip people off, just because somebody looks like they can afford twenty thousand. You should not be quick to tell them this this is twenty thousand. Yeah, I'm not saying that uh, you should not price your your stuff up there, but now the disadvantage with with being dishonest in terms of your value proposition and what you're asking from the client is that one day they will find the same product at the actual price, and then that is how you'll have lost that client. Yeah. Also, there is the aspect of timekeeping or time consciousness, uh, especially for somebody starting like me. You know, I don't have so many people working for me. So I have, if I, if I agree with a client that I should take three days to make an outfit, I have to make efforts too, to make sure that that deadline is kept. If, if I have a fitting, maybe I need to meet a client to do fittings for, for, for a project, I should be very focused on being there in time so that I don't waste the client's time and, and give a bad, uh, a bad review or even make the client to have a negative perspective of, of my brand, yeah. And then uh, there's also diligence, diligence in terms of, of being really who you say you are. Yeah, you know a lot of people in, in, in the art industry, they ape, they try to ape other people. And now when the rubber hits the road and then a client realizes that you're not who you say you are, you know, that then there is a disconnect and uh, in an industry such as this one, once you lose a client, once you lose that footing, it's very hard to gain it back. So how do you get to connect with your clients? Do you look for them personally or they find you? Uh, funnily enough, I, I, I haven't invested yet in marketing, but most people just refer. Yeah, and most, I actually started receiving jobs, fashion jobs, because of the way I dress, yeah. People see me on Instagram and then somebody is on my DM, I need this kind of outfit and you're the right guy who can fix me with this. And then now from there you worked it. Yeah. 
I will say social media is top of, of my list. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. how do you keep up with the trends? How do you know there's a new trend in town? You know, I will say for for somebody who follows trends, that might be an issue. But personally, I take myself as somebody who sets the trends. Yeah. So as when the trends are changing, it is people like me who are changing it. So I like to, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we want to predict the future of popular culture by creating it. Yeah, we look at what is missing. Like right now, the, collection, the collections that I'm working on, I'm trying to get what is the market missing. Because all designers in, in Kenya are focused on Kitenge. And the moment you, you mention that you're a Kenyan designer or an African designer, everybody expects you to churn out Kitenge outfits. But personally, I'm not, Kitenge is not my favorite. Yeah, I like to experiment with different, different kinds of fields. What kind of challenges have you come across and how did you tackle them? Uh, capital is, 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 is one giant in the room. Because, let's say one industrial machine costs like 117,000. Yeah, so you can imagine a young person who is starting off, where will you find 117,000 to buy a machine? And that is the machine. You need an overlock machine, you need a button hole machine, you see, you need uh, different, you need different, different, an embroidery machine, you need a printing machine if you are a serious fashion designer, you need uh, certain types of equipment that are quite expensive. Yeah, so capital or lack of access to capital is a, is a big issue. Also, uh, as a fashion designer in Kenya, there is uh, the challenge of um, acceptance of, of, of this career as something which is serious. You will find that, uh, for example, supermarkets here in Kisumu, they produce their uh, outfits in Nairobi. Yeah, these is an Ivers, these corporate shirts, you find that they make them out there. There are things like these reflectors, they are made outside there. There are even these brooches and flowers, they are made outside there. If you tell somebody I'm from Kisumu and I make this, they look at your product like, is it really of good quality? Yeah, so there's that challenge, there's that stereotype that Anything that is made in Kenya is, 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 is second grade. And then you find somebody buying something of the same value, something of the same quality, at a higher value than what they will have bought for my designs. For example, if I tell somebody that I sell my bag, the little bag at, at 3,000, for example, people will not buy. But if you look at maybe such a bag uh, made by Louis Vuitton or Versace or Gucci, somebody is willing to spend 10,000 on it without thinking twice. Yeah. The last one I will say is uh, lack of, of, of access to skilled labor. Mm. Yeah. Right now if I need somebody who can do pleating, for example I have designs that need pleating. So in Kenya I doubt if there is a company that does pleating. Yeah. If I have to now do a commercial version of those, because if I, if I want to do one or two pieces I can use an iron box. But if I want to make now, let's say, 50,000 copies to sell in Garissa Lodge, to sell in Isili, mm. I need a serious company that can do plating. Mm. Yeah, so you find that I have to go to the UK, I have to go to China, to Singapore, to Turkey, to find some things like these ones. And, these are, and there are very many people who are unemployed here in Kenya. They have not thought that I can just be doing plating and making a living out of it. Mm. Yeah, so lack of skilled labor is, is a huge factor. What are your greatest achievements? My greatest uh, achievement is, is, is a recognition that came recently, very recently, and I really cross fingers for it. I got a call from New York, they are film producers for Netflix. Mm -hmm. They want to produce a film and they want to feature my designs. They want, to, they want me to style the film according to what they were proposing. So we are still talking, but for me, even though it has not yet happened, but that, just getting that call, that somebody from New York has identified my work and is pleased with it. That will be the greatest right now. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, what gives me the most gratification is trying to, to make a mark in the life of somebody who cannot repay me or who I don't expect to repay me. And uh, that comes in terms of charity. I'm very proud of, of, of the charity projects that I've taken part in. Yeah, I've done a prison visit to Eldoret GK. Mm -hmm. 
visits to uh, visits to schools, autistic uh, autistic schools. Yeah, visiting children with autism, inspiring them, hanging out with them, cooking for them, washing for them, uh, slum donations, yeah, market cleanups. I get the best feeling when I go out there and do something where nobody is going to pay me. Yeah, another of my greatest achievements is also another recognition. Uh, a win. I was uh, a winner for Safaricom BYOB, that is to always a uh, you know, creative Safaricom Creation Camp, Blaze Creation Camp. Yeah, it was a creative competition for different young people who create different stuff, and I managed to participate and win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels good to win, even if I would, even if I was to quit the creative industry today, I would have no regrets because every day I look out there and I see people who I've worked with, I see people who I've mentored doing, keeping up with the dream, like they're also now carving their own paths, they're also doing their own things and some of them are even now mentoring other people and uh, that is satisfying. So what are your future ambitions like five years to come, ten years to come, where do you see yourself in the fashion industry? Uh, in five years' time, I'm positioning myself to to create uh, an institute of fashion. Yeah, I'm positioning myself to create an institute of fashion that does training for skilled labor, that 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 produces apparel at the same time, and that even uh, outsources human resource. In terms of, we can have um, people who have trained and who have trained others facilitating other people now, even other institutions getting hired to go and train other institutions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I'm focused on that because to have something original, you have to create it from the ground and, and do the, the dirty work. So I want people who, like if I want somebody who can do a great embroidery and they are not available, I want to be in a position to train them. Mm-hmm. If we have, if you want somebody who is great in print technology, we want to be in a position to train them. And uh, I, I started by saying I'm positioning myself because it will not just happen. Yeah, so through events, I'm doing, I'm very big on events, mm-hmm. fashion events, networking events, where I bring different young people with ideas together and even old people. Together we share ideas, we share visions. I'm also big on, uh, on, on financial, financial training and uh, financial education, yeah. I educate myself a lot in matters of finance, uh, in terms of creating business plans, creating fi- financial plan, books of accounts, yeah. In terms of uh, economizing, tax law, knowing how taxes work, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of scaling, knowing how to, where to buy machines, how to buy machines, when to sell them. Different aspects that are going to enable my company to have a very firm understanding of what we are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in five years time, the Institute of Fashion is the priority. It is the goal. In 10 years time, the goal is now to become a global brand. What can you tell the youths out there yeah. who are languishing in regret because of lack of employment? Uh, lack of employment, I cannot say there is lack of, em- and, uh, there is lack of employment in Kenya, though it is the, it is, it is the notion yeah personally i'm not a complainer people say there is no employment mm-hmm. yet kwam jengo there's there's always space jwakali mm-hmm. there's always space in ukienda kwa mafundi okshona there are always people who are demanding for their clothes that are backdated mm-hmm. yeah if you go to any tailor today right now you'll find that they have too much work to do yeah if you go to the plumbing you find that there's somebody who's been waiting for a plumber for the ra- for the last 2 weeks if you go to electrical, you find there's somebody who's been waiting for an electrician. You see like this car right now, it has a puncture. Yeah? If, if, if the youths of Kenya had taken their future into their own hands, there will be no puncture here. I, I would have had like five people knocking me. Kuna kazi? Is there anything I can do to make a living? Because you can create a job out of a vacuum. I've told you right now, I used to sell mandazis. Yeah? I've, personally, I've never been employed, but I've never been unemployed. Because if, if there is no job in PR today, there are jobs in, 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 in Dobi. 
you know, their jobs in slashing. Like, do whatever you're doing as time moves. Yeah, I work with the principal of Napoleon Bonaparte, who said that you should uh, you should negotiate while advancing. What is not there in Kenya is permanent and pensionable jobs. We don't have that. But we have jobs. You have to ask yourself what is needed in the community that is not there and do it. And now that there's the challenge of capital in Kenya, use you what you know. Yeah? Like, for me personally, right now, you see, I'm, I'm in a scholarship program. They're supposed to be funding me. Mm-hmm. But I have already bought my machine. And how did I buy my machine? I was training kids for drama. How did I get that job? I went knocking <laughs> from place to place mm-hmm. until I found somebody who said yes. Yeah? And they, I trained there, I got some little capital. Now I've started. But if you're sitting and waiting, you'll keep waiting. There's this, there's this, I don't know if it is a, a historic problem that has been put in your heads that Africa is a poor country, mm-hmm. Africans are third grade in terms of their thinking, Africans are dependent on the West. Talk mm-hmm. wakili. Yeah, take it out of your head. Just do anything, start, just start. If you think you, can, you are good at being a DJ, start being a DJ. If you're good at chicken farming, get one hen. And if you have no capital of getting it, ask yourself, what am I good at? If you know how to wash clothes very fast, go and wash somebody's clothes, get 500 bob, get a hen. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just take your life into your own hands. Mm -hmm. Nobody will do it for you. Yeah. Wow. You have heard it. If we do not work hard as young people, we will keep being told that we are the leaders of tomorrow and yet we are living in the now and today. So let us rise up and keep negotiating as we advance. Till next time, this has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangwe Sogrenis. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it.